Good morning, church. Uh, good morning also to those who are watching us online. Okay, welcome to our Sunday service. For those watching us online via Facebook, we invite you to share our online stream to your family and friends by tagging them in the comment section. Okay, you can also comment down your praise and prayer items, and we will set a time to pray for you. Now, um, allow me to read to you some verses from Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 7. Let's ponder on this. Okay? It's a very uh, uh, a verse that uh, would really prepare us all today. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with, with, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. What a glorious God we have. Okay. Um, so today as we worship him, uh, let us all stand and exalt his name with our voice. Hallelujah. Let's give God the best clap offering. Dakila ang ating Diyos. How great is our God. Dakila siya.
Yama. Amen. We praise you, Jesus. Give your best love offering to God.
banal mong dugo na nabuhos dun sa krus upang masumpungan namin yung dakilang pag-asa sa pamamagitan ng 
Kung nabuhos doon sa krus, kami ay napatawad sa aming mga kasalanan. Salamat po sa kapatawaran. Sa pagkakataong ito, sa patuloy naming paglakad, Panginoon, sa buhay na iyong tinalaga sa amin, ba ito ay magamit namin sa pagbibigay luwalhati sa iyo. That we can honor you words, in our deeds, in our actions. Sa anuman lugar kami naroon, Panginoon, sa aming tahanan, sa aming trabaho, sa lugar na kung saan kami ay uh, kumikilos at gumagalaw, sa aming komunidad, magsilbinawa kami liwanag bilang iyong mga anak. Liwanag, Panginoon, sa madilim na kapaligiran ng mundong ito. light of this world. And we continue to pray, Lord, for that light to shine in this nation sa bansang Pilipinas. Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord over this nation. Pinapanalangin po namin ang nalalapit na SK and Barangay Election. Karoon na po ng pagpapiling ng mga Uh, certificate of candidacy na sila ay nag-file. Lord, we pray na sa darating na election, this coming election, Lord, we pray na ang mga maupo sa mga posisyon na barangay ng mga SK, Lord, iupo mo yung mga tao na makakatuwa ng mga local churches in their respective places upang mapalaganap ang iyong salita upang hanggang sa kasuluk-sulukan ng bawat barangay ay mahayag ang iyong pangalan. At ang dalangin namin, gamitin mo po ang local church na ito ng GCF Batangas. Katuwang ng bawat barangay na inaabot po namin. Start po kami sa talong barangay kung saan ang growth group namin ay present. Lord, we pray for that light yung liwanag na dala-dala namin ay kumalat. Magliwanag. At Panginoon, sa bawat isa sa amin na naririto, ang dalangin po namin ang liwanag na yon ay patuloy at patuloy at patuloy na mag andap-andap ng mga liwanag. Lord, this morning, let that fire, Lord, ay patuloy. Let the light be on fire. Mag, lalong mag-umapaw at lalo magliwanag at mag-init ang aming damdamin sa pagmamahal sa iyo upang kami patuloy na makalakad ayon sa iyong katulad hindi po namin yun magagawa without your help. Let us ask God. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to consume us. Yun po yung magindalangin natin sa mga oras na ito. Napatuloy tayong hipuin at alabin ng pagmamahal ng banal na spirito upang yung liwanag na nasa sa ating puso ay mag-umapaw sa pamamagitan ng pagmamahal ng Diyos sa atin patungo sa ating kapwa. Panginoon, yun po ang amin dalangin sa araw na ito. At sa aming pananambahan, patuloy kang mangusap sa amin. As our senior pastor, he is on Kuwa, will deliver the word. Lord, anoint him the fullness of your anointing. Use Him as your mouthpiece this morning. Prepare our hearts to receive your word. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
church, let us continue to be an attitude of worship through our giving. Many offerings in the Bible show us a long history of giving. In the Old Testament, we see all the congregation and people of God giving to build the temple. Giving is also an act of worship. In all cases, the Lord is looking for a giving from the heart, not out of rule-following obligations. In Exodus 25, verse 2, it says, Speak to the children of Israel that they may bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. We encourage everyone, even our first-timer and guests, to give out of love for the Lord. Give not because we are obligated, but because this is a part of our worship. Okay, church, let us pray, all pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are the God who is the great provider. Great is your faithfulness. And uh, you are the God full of unfailing love. Lord, we acknowledge that everything that we have comes from you and you alone. Lord, as we um, give our tithes and offering today, uh, may we have a manner or an attitude of uh, love and sacrifice to you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for all things come from you. Thank you for this privilege of being partakers of your kingdom through our giving, our tithes and offering. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For our worshipers here with us, our deaconesses have offering bags where you can drop your giving. For those worshiping us online, you may deposit your tithes and offering via our Metro Bank account through bank transfer or GCash. Okay. Please save a screenshot or screen capture of your transaction and email us so we can document your giving accordingly. Our bank details are posted on your screen. Okay. Okay. If you were not able to catch the bank details, they will again be flashed after the service. Now, let us prepare our hearts. Uh, set our hearts to listen to the Word of God to be proclaimed by our senior pastor, Pastor Hizon Kuwa. Yeah. Good morning. Asensya na po, first time po ginamit. Hiram lang. Today we continue with our sermon series on the book of Colossians. And we'll be covering chapter 2 beginning with verse 16. Our sermon series has been entitled, Walk in Christ. Our key verse comes from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, sa makatawid, nung tinanggap mo ang Panginoong Isus sa iyong buhay bilang Panginoon na tagapagligtas, so walk in Him. Lumakad ka sa Kanya. Mamuhay ka sa Kanya. Hindi lamang para sa Kanya, kundi sa Kanya. Rooted and built up in Him. Rooted nakaugat, matatag na nakasalalay sa Kanya. Si Jesus ang pundasyon ng iyong buhay. Built up, you continue to, to grow. Ikaw ay nakatayo dahil sa Kanya. Ikaw ay patuloy na lumalago dahil sa Kanya. And establish in the faith. Patuloy na tumitibay ang pananampalataya. Ang lahat ng to ay dahil kay Jesus. Just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving, nag-uumapaw sa pasasalamat. Today we'll be talking about some of the false teachings that came into the, book, the church in, in Colossae. And we'll also be looking into, ano kayo mga maling pananampalaya, paniniwala na, na ating dinadala. And one of them is that 
we are thankful to God because of the by faith of our faith or byproduct of our faith. Yung mga produkto ng ating pananampalataya. Tayo nagpapasalamat lamang dahil sa produkto ng ating pananampalataya. Ano yung sabihin? Pag ako'y nanalangin, sinagot ako ni Lord. Praise the Lord. Kapag maayos ang aking mga finances, praise the Lord. Kapag ako ay healthy, praise the Lord. E paano kung hinayaan ng ni Lord na maging mikakulangan? Are you still willing to praise God? Paano kung meron kang karamdaman? Are you still willing to praise God? What if your relationships are going through tough waters? Are you still willing to praise God? And this verse tells us that rooted, built up, and established in faith, it is because of Jesus Christ, thus bringing you to that overflowing thanksgiving. Hindi dahil sa byproduct ng yung faith, kundi dahil kay Kristo. And that's our key verse for this series. And thus, walk in Him. Mamuhay ka sa Kanya. Mamuhay ka sa katatagan kung sino ang Panginoong Jesus. Today's sermon, I've entitled, Walk Alive in Christ. This is in connection to last week's sermon from Elder Mark, Alive in Christ. Do you still remember the title? Alive in Christ. So today, we'll be looking at Walk Alive in Christ. When I first thought of this title, sabi ko, ano bang opposite ng walk alive in Christ? Walking dead. Tama, di ba? Alive, walk, walking dead. Alam ng asawa ko, ng pamilya ko, pag zombie sa Netflix, lahat pinapanood ko. Ariri ba? Actually, when we talk about our spiritual condition, we are actually walking dead before we came to know Christ. We were walking dead. Katotohanan yun. Sapagat sinabi ng salita ng Diyos, tayong lahat ay patay sa kasalanan. Tayo ay patay spiritually. We are all dead. We might be walking around, living our lives, going through the daily chores, going to school, going to work, but we were actually walking dead. Right? Totoo yun. Because when, when somebody tells us, Uy, basahin mo yung horoscope, makakatulong yan. Oh, sige, basahin ko. Uh, pag sinabing, Uy, ikaw may karamdawan, magpabulong ka at magpatawas ka. Sunod tayo. E alam ko, yung tao's effective daw sa two places. The left and the right. Di ba? Pag sinabing, ay, punta ka doon sa lugar na yun. Yung, yung sasambahin mo doon. Yun ang Diyos na specialization ng iyong, pinag, iyong concern. Punta ka doon. Bumiyahe ka three hours. Sige, punta ako doon. Because we were all dead in sin. We did not know the true God. Hindi natin kilala ang tunay na Diyos. Yes, we were, we were going through our lives as though everything is okay, but we were actually dead in sin. Destined for eternal damnation. That's where we were going to. Hell. Because we were all sinners, dead in sin, dead in the truth of who Jesus Christ is, and we were living our lives in that reality. But praise be to God. Praise be to God because the cross that Jesus went to made us alive. He made us alive. Because of Jesus Christ, He redeemed us, He saved us, He gave us this new life, he made us new creation. He made us alive. Nabuhay ang ating spirito. Nabuhay na tayo. 
mula sa kamatayan to life that is eternal. Buhay na na kay Kristo. Buhay na walang hanggan. Buhay na may kabuluhan. Buhay na may katotohanan kung sino ang tunay na Diyos. And thus, from walking dead, we now live for Christ. Sumasamba sa tunay na Diyos. I'm particularly hyped up today because when my beautiful wife came up here and called us to worship, we were almost full. Hals puno na tayo. Praise God for that. It's an encouragement for all of us. Kung may konting empty seats pa kanina, next Sunday, punuin na natin before 10. Because, dati, antok pa ako, late ako, magbe-makeup pa ako. Ngayon, I'm alive. I want to praise God. I'll be here before 10. Amen. Amen. Whatever we call ourselves, whether we call ourselves believers, save, redeem, new creation, alive in Christ, it is all because of the cross. Jesus Christ who died for our sins. Ang Panginoon na namatay sa krus, ang siya nagbayad ng ating kasalanan. Mula sa kamatayan, tayo ay binigyan ng buhay na walang hanggan. Yung difference na yun, nawa ang bawat sa atin, dumating sa some point na ma-realize talaga natin, may isa buhay talaga natin. Yung katotohanan na yun. This is how Elder Mark summarized his sermon last Sunday. What does it mean to be alive in Christ? Who? Jesus Christ, the Messiah. That's, how, that's why we are alive in Christ. Because of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And so, what do we do now? We walk in Him. Why? For He is 100% God. He's God Himself. When? The day of salvation. The, the day that we trusted Jesus Christ, nung araw na tayo, o yung moment na tayo na nampatataya sa Panginoon Jesus. We had the spiritual circumcision and baptism. At paano? Sa cross ni Jesus Christ nangyari yan. How? Rooted and built up in Him, established in faith, abounding in thanksgiving, and not being captive of human traditions. And last Sunday, Elder Mark explained to us these verses from chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. In Him, okay, Jesus, also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Yung ating laman na makasalanan, take it off na because of Jesus Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, tayun, we have been identified with Jesus Christ in which you were also raised with him through faith. Si Jesus, namatay, nilibing, nabuhay muli, tayo rin na nanampalataya sa kanya, we also have been raised with him through faith sa ating pananampalataya in the powerful work of God who raised him from the dead. And you, you, me, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, tayo na patay sa kasalanan, God made alive together with Him. At paano nangyari yun? Having forgiven us all our trespasses. Ang ating lahat ng kasalanan, napagpatawad na sapagkat si Jesus ang tumubos sa atin. By canceling the record of death that stood against us with its legal demands, Kanselado na lahat ng pagkakasala sapagkat inako na ni Jesus at siya na ang namatay. All the legal requirements of it that is to be separated from it, to be delivered to damnation, damnation forever in hell, all those had been canceled. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He died for us. And thus, we are in Christ. We are alive tayo ay buhay sa Panginoong Jesus. Again, walk alive in Christ. This is what we will cover beginning with verse 16 until 23. Can I invite you to all to stand? Tayo po tayong lahat. 
Let us read together. Masayin po natin ng malakas lahat po tayo. This is from the ESV version. Together. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink. Or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath, these are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belong to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going on in details about visions, puff up without reason by his senseless mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourish and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you die to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to things that all perish as they are used, according to human precepts and understanding. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in sapping the indulgence of the flesh. Manalangin po tayo. Holy Spirit, we, we bow for you, Lord. We ask that you speak to us. Grant, O oh Lord, that our hearts will be open to your word, to your prompting, to your conviction. Bless us today once more, O oh Lord through your powerful word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all be seated. Salamat po. <clears throat> From Elder Mark, last week, how does it mean to be alive in Christ? How, rooted and built up in Him, established in faith, abounding in thanksgiving, and not being captive of human traditions. Now that we are alive in Christ, we ought not to surrender and submit ourselves to human traditions that are in most seriousness contrary to God's Word, particularly to what Christ had already done for us, salvation. My thesis for you this morning, walk alive in Christ by not letting anyone pass judgment on you and disqualify you based on self-made religion. May kita po natin yan sa verses nating binasa together. So, we talk about self-made religion. You will also read later on, human teachings. So, cite muna tayo ng example. Ano kaya yung mga popular human teachings na ina-embrace natin ang ating kultura? Ang dalas marinig. Dalas ka marinig yan. Paano mo lang heart mo? Pilihan mo kung saan ka masaya. Di ba? Lalo sa mga kabataan, paulit-ulit ka narinig, follow my heart mo. Pili mo, kung saan ka masaya, doon ka pumunta. May nabasa ako meme eh. Sabi niya, um, Mami, magre-resign na ako sa work. Sabi ng Mami, bakit ka magre-resign sa work? Hindi na ako masaya. Hindi ka lang masaya, magre-resign ka na sa work. For some reason, that's in a trend. Okay? Feelings, emotion. Of course, we are romantic beings, but... I guess, I believe the Lord has more to that. Because Jeremiah 79 reminds us and warns us, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? If we would just rely on our own heart, our own emotions, our own feelings, yes, we are prone to sin against God. Sometimes what we feel overrules what God has clearly said. Kaya lang, kapag tumibok ang puso. I'm not talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, ha? Di ba? Hirap, di ba? But 
it is deceitful. Actually, the, that's from verse 9, right? Verse 10 says, no, this is a warning for us. I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. God knows what's in your heart. Yes, sometimes we can portray holiness with our intentions, but God knows what's in there. And He will be the one to grant you the fruit of your deeds. Kung ano yung consequences ng yung action, God knows what's in your heart. But I have good news for you. This is Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. Sa verses 7 to 8, look here. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Blessed. Blessed are you. In one commentary, the commentator said, Ano yung sabi ng blessed? It means how happy you are. How grateful you are. You are indeed very happy, you man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. And this man who trusts Lord, the Lord, he is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. That's how the scripture characterizes one who trusts the Lord. We saw this picture last Sunday. Father Mark used this to illustrate what it means to be rooted. The, the trunk, how strong it is because it is rooted in Christ. That's also one who trusts the Lord. Deeply rooted, established, strong, matatag, matibay. And its leaves are very green, fruitful, wonderful. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Panginoon. So, instead na follow your heart, pili mo yung anong magpapasay sa'yo, follow mo lang si Lord. Di ba? Pilin mo kung saan si Lord masaya. Then you will be truly blessed. When you sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Anong ibig mo sabihin? Pagpalain si Lord? Anong ibig sabihin? When you sing that, when you say that, Bless the Lord. Have you ever thought and wonder, Anong ibig sabihin ng Bless the Lord? It doesn't mean, uh, oh, bless the Lord, bigyan si Lord ng ano. God owns everything. He does not need anything from you. But when you live your lives in accordance to God's purposes and will, when you surrender yourself fully to Him, bless the Lord indeed. It causes God joyfulness, happiness. That's what it means. And if you follow the Lord, then you too will be blessed. Tingnan natin ang ilang verses. Matthew 16, verse 24 reads, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's what it will bless the Lord with. Follow the Lord. Deny yourself and you will be blessed. One more verse. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. Blessed, happy, content it is for everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in God's ways. This one, uh, one of the beautiful verses Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of the sinners, nor sits in the seat 
of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. This also answered the questions. Paano malalaman ano yung magpapasaya kay Lord? Ano yung, ano yung gusto ni Lord? Here's the answer. Meditate on God's Word. Meditate on God's Word day and night. As you make decisions, as you pray about matters, come to the Word of God. And He will speak to you. Okay, let's go back to Colossians. Walk alive in Christ. Verse 16 reads, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink. Huwag mo na hayaan na husgahan ka. Ikaw na mana ng palataya. Kasi nga, nung time ng Church of Colossae, may mga false teachings na pumapasok. Bumabalik na gre-retro to the laws in the Old Testament. Narinig nila na si Jesus ang kaligtasan. And yet, there are some false teachers coming in, false teachings coming in to church. And so Paul had to write this letter in order to correct those false teachings. So, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink. You know, when I cross-check this, in, with First Timothy, grabe pala yung mga false teachings na yan, kung saan nang gagaling. First Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Wow. And if we study the theology on angels and demons, we will see there that the intentions of the demons, the evil spirits, the fallen ones, are to deceive the saints, especially with regard to the truth of who Jesus Christ is. And the intention nila, whether it be mukhang zombie or mukhang pogi, ang point to deceive you of the truth of the Word of God and who, who Jesus Christ is. So, galing daw doon, through the insen- insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. Who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So, itong mga false teachers na sinasabi, oh, ang iyong kaligtasan. Okay, sabi mo, si Lord, si Jesus, si Lord, pero kailangan gawin mo itong mga laws na to, itong mga batas na to, itong mga legal laws na to. Ito ang magdadala sa inyo ng kaligtasan. And so Paul had to write to correct that. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. In the evangelical circles, we, we at times would, would continue to hear other Christians saying, oh, I think we should continue to follow these this dietary laws found in the Old Testament. Let's be careful then not to be deceived because our complete, total salvation is found in Christ and in Christ alone. No matter how subtle the suggestions are, Wag kang magpapalin lang na meron kang dapat gawin para ikaw ay lubusang maligtas. Going back to Colossians 2, Therefore, let no one pass judgments on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. So, hindi lang dietary, no? Meron mga ceremonial festivals din na Sinasabi ng mga false teachers na kailangan gawin para kayo maligtas. And so Paul had to correct them. Now, we also have discussions in, in, in churches with regard to uh, even our growth groups, matters here, um, 
Ano ba yan? Eh, eh bago pa lang siya mananampalataya, eh hindi pa niya parang maatim na kumain ng dinuguan. O kaya, minsan naman, uh, ay, meron mga festivals na kailangan sundin. Okay. And so, just as the scripture reminds us not to be judgmental, we also show grace to those who have yet to fully capture the truth of who Jesus Christ is. And so, may, may, may suggest or may commands sa Romans 14 kung paano tayo makikitungo. Okay, kung isa daw ay uh, gusto niyang kumain ng karne, isa ayaw, huwag ka na maghanda ng lechon pag inibita mo siya, di ba? Tulingan na lang. Tama? Uh, pag yung isa naman ay gusto ay Ay, ay, ako salad lang. Salad lang kinakain ko. Eh, ikaw, malay steak. Bagi steak, lagi may kasamang salad. You know? The point is, uh, do not use this freedom that you have in order to hurt others. Use your freedom to bring others to Christ. Be sensitive to your brothers and sisters. But nevertheless, let us hold on to the truth that no dietary laws, no festivals can bring us salvation. They are not of requirements to our salvation in Christ. Balik ulit tayo sa Colossians 2, 16 to 23. Patulong kang nga sa food, sa drinks, sa festivals, new moon, sabbath, and sabi dito, these are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Ito daw mga laws na to, shadow lang sila. Hindi sila ang magbibigay sa inyo ng kaligtasan. Sabi sa Matthew 5.17, sabi ni Jesus Christ, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Itong ma- all these requirements na law, si Jesus na ang nag-fulfill para sa atin. Romans 8, 3-4, For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin. Hindi natin magawa si Jesus ang gumawa para sa atin. He condemns sin in the flesh and in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. So yung righteous requirement ng law, si Jesus ang tumupad, nag-fulfill Para sa atin. And so when we identify ourselves with Him, when we say, Lord, You are my Savior, my Lord, we identify with who He is and what He has done for us, then all these requirements of the law has been fulfilled in us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The shadow, sabi kanina. Yung laws, dietary laws, festival laws, shadow lang daw siya. Hindi siya yung katotohanan. Hindi siya magbibigay ng kaligtasan. Shadow, di ba? Let's say, dito, naglalakad ka sa cars eh, sa gabi, may, may ilaw doon. So, naglalakad yung kaibigan mo, nasa likod ka. Ayan, may shadow. Di ba? Nagpaglaro na kayo, tinatapakan yung shadow ng kaibigan mo. Di ba? Nasasaktan ba siya? Hindi, di ba? See, it's a shadow. It's not the substance. It not, it's not your friend itself. Okay? Maring naglalakad ka, Sa harapan yung kaibigan mong babae, yung shadow niya, nandito, di ba? So, lalakad ka. Eh, sabi niya, friend lang daw. So, hanggang touch ka na lang ng shadow, di ba? Eh, sabi, friends lang daw, eh, di ba? So, hindi mo matouch yung tunay, di ba? Kasi it's a shadow. Eh, hindi yun ang magbibigay ng katotohanan. Tama? The shadow. And all these laws just by shadow. But Christ is the substance. The cross. Jesus Christ is the one who has given us life. 
made us alive, alive, bring us from death to life. Mula sa pagiging patay sa katotohanan sa spirito, pagiging buhay sa spirito sa katotohanan. Another self-made religion, human teachings that are kind of, or is kind of popular nowadays. Uh, maging totoo ka sa sarili mo. Believe in yourself. Well, if you rely on yourself completely, then you have become what the devil did at the Garden of Eden. Balikan natin yung istorya ng Genesis. Diba si Adam and Eve, nandun. Si Eve, nandun. Kabilin-bili na ng Panginoon. Huwag mong, huwag mong kakanin yung, yung prutas na sa puno na yun. Ano yung offer ni Satan? Hindi totoo yun. Sinabi pa talaga ng Diyos? Kanin mo at ikaw ay magiging tulad ng Diyos. Disobedience was one of the sins that Adam and Eve committed. But the actual offer was, you don't need God. Take this fruit. Kinuha nga. Hindi ko kailangan si God. And so we should be careful with this popular meme or whatever. Maging totoo ka sa limo, believe in yourself. Because it might result to self-reliance that's saying, I don't need God. Ang tama, maging totoo ka kay Lord. Believe in the Lord. Maniwala ka kay Lord. Manampalataya ka kay Lord. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. Masa natin together para magising naman kayo. Trust in the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. And everything that you do, acknowledge Him, and He will be the one to make straight your paths. Psalm 62, 8. Can we, can we read it again together? At all times. Hindi lang yung pag may kailangan ka. At all times. Trust in the Lord. Let's go back to Colossians 2. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puff up with reason by his senses, mind. So ito, parang kailangan mo talaga puntahan yung background. Ano ba yung tinuturo ng mga false teachers sa church in Colossae that time? May asceticism. Uh, ano nga ba sa Tagalog, yung asceticism? Ano yung tawag sa you're flogging yourself during Good Friday? Pagpapetinitensya. You're causing yourself pain. Uh, uh, avoidance of the things, of matters. And when I read some background of this, on this, meron din palang mysticism na nangyayari. Ano yung mysticism? Uh, papagutom, hindi natutulog, and then nag expect ng visions, nag expect ng ecstatic experience, and then that's why sabi dito, nagkakaroon ng visions, puff up without reason by his senses. Man, yung mind niya, uh, nag-hallucinate, and thus, experiencing mysticism. At yun ang itinuturo ng false teachers sa church ng Colossae. And so, let no one disqualify you. Let no one take away your reward spiritually. 
be mindful of the truth. Also included in that false teachings ay yung worship of angels. Sumasamba sila sa mga anghel. Which the Bible clearly declares na kasalanan, mali ang sumamba sa mga anghel. Angel locks in pwede, pero... No, mga tamangels should be bowed to. Yes, angels are but God's instruments to bring news. They are messengers. Go back to the New Testament, the Old Testament. Sila ay mga servants ni God. But we are not to worship angels. Neither are we to worship human saints. Right? And so, we need to be careful. We need to always go to the Scripture kung ano ang tamang pagsamba at pananampalataya. Another self-made religion, human teachings nowadays, ano kaya ito? Abutin mo ang pangarap mo. Dream big. Well, okay naman in some way. But again, if you dream according to your own pleasures, you dream big so that you will have a big career, big house, big car, big bank statements, then there's something wrong with that dream. Ang tama, abutin mo yung plano ni Lord para sa'yo. Dream deep. Basa ko lang yan, somewhere, yung dream deep. Yung plano ni Lord sa'yo, alamin mo, Mag-dream deep ka. Ano yung sabi ng, anong pagkaiba ng dream big sa dream deep? When you dream deep, you go to what God places in your heart. It can be the most exciting career, vocation, business. But if you dream deep, you begin with what God intense for you with regard to that dream. You go deep into what God has placed in your heart. Ayun yan ni Lord sa'yo. Proverbs 19.21 Many are plans in the mind of a man but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Yes. Sometimes, as you plan out, things may not work out, as you have planned out, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We take steps of faith with regard to what God wants us to accomplish. Continuing, Colossians 2, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments grows with a growth that is from God. Pag na-deceive na ang isang mana ng palataya, nakakalimutan niyang humawak sa Panginoon. God who is the source of everything in whom we are rooted, established, and continuing to be built up, now we are getting the, the touch. Let us be reminded, Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. We can do nothing apart from Him. Pinatayan na ako ng remote over time na daw. Then we extended the four minutes. Again, Colossians 2 reminds us, the whole, for in him the full, whole fullness of deity dwells body, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also 
you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us of all forgiveness by canceling the record of death that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Hold on to those verses. Because we are in the world, we are in the culture wherein false teachings are abundant. Now, towards the end of chapter 2, if with Christ you die to the elemental spirits of the world, why as if you were still alive in the world? Do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. So again, yung context nito, ano ba yung sinasabi dito? Itong mga to, ito yung mga points ng asceticism. Do not handle, do not touch, taste, do not touch. By doing this, you will be saved. Requirements ng salvation. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Ito daw ay mga, they will perish, according, these are according to human precepts and teachings. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. As if pag ginawa mo to, yung sinful inside of us, mawawala. Eh, ilan ba sa atin nagsabi na ng diet year after year after year, mag-exercise ako year after year. Eh, di ba, the more that we put loss, the more that we realize how sinful we are. Do not handle. Sa Jewish laws, ceremonial laws, whenever they go to the crying wall, they have to wash their hands. Meron silang paraan kung gaso ng kamay. Do not handle. And this they believe, because, well, not all Jews are non-believers. There are Jewish messiahs, mga Jewish na nampalatay sa pangasin. But many of them are still not, so they wash their hands as, uh, to make themselves clean, they make, to make themselves acceptable before God. Do not handle. Do not taste. Alam ba ninyo, pag yung plato sa restaurant, pag nalagyan ng meat, pork, tatapon na nila yung plate. Kasi they should not be eating with the Gentiles. Work. Do not taste. Do not touch. Pag sabat, yung elevator nila, merong sabat elevator. Hindi mo kailangang pumindot. The elevator stops at every floor. Because by touching it, it means they are working. And on sabat day, they are not supposed to work. That's in the context of the Jewish people, non-believers of Christ. And so, again, we're reminded, our salvation is not about these human teachings, but it's about Christ and Christ alone. These human precepts and teachings have indeed an appearance of wisdom. Mukhang maganda, di ba? But they're promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. As a summary, let's be reminded ourselves, our relationship with Christ, it is not about legalism, it is not about asceticism, it is not about mysticism, it is not about or by angel worship. Walk alive in Christ by not letting anyone pass judgment on you and disqualify you based on self-made religions. Pray po tayo. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your faithfulness, your love towards us. Totoo naman, Lord, eh. Ano mang lotion, we just can't. And so we praise you, we thank you for Christ, you did it for us. In you, we have found salvation. You have made us 
alive, dead from our... In the previous, of because of our sinfulness, we are now made alive to you, our Lord Jesus Christ. In order to remember once more how much Jesus loves us, what he did to, to make us alive, we will commemorate once more his sacrifice for us by using these two elements. Sa amin po mga bisita, uh, we welcome you to partake of these elements, to join us. Kayo na dumating na sa punto sa inyong buhay na tinanggap mo ang Panginoong Sus sa inyong buhay bilang iyong Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. Ang mga elements pong ito, gamitin natin bilang pag-aalala at pasasalamat sa ating Panginoong Jesus. a symbol of the body of Jesus Christ. Simbolo ng katawan ng ating Panginoong Sus. Broken for us. He died for us so that from being dead in a sin, we have been made alive in Christ. On the night that He was betrayed, He took the bread, He broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you, for you, for you. Take it and whenever you eat it, do remember me. Let us remember Christ together.
alive, coming from being dead in sin. The shedding of blood was necessary. Jesus shed his blood for us. He died for us. So that you and I may be alive in Christ. Destined for eternal damnation. Through Christ, we have received the beautiful gift of eternal life. And it's because of Jesus Christ. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He lifted it up. He gave thanks. And he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do remember me. Let us drink with thanksgiving to our Lord. Let us pray. We give thanks indeed, Lord. Oh, wow, how wonderful it is to be alive in Christ. And may we continue to live for you. We give thanks. We pray in Jesus' name. Ko sa Ano nga ba? <laughs> I will not judge you for this <laughs> We are saved not because of our work, because of our faith in Christ Jesus. Okay ba? Okay, so meron po kanina yung mga let us not be Follow mo si Lord. Believe in the Lord. At dream deep of what the Lord has said in our hearts. God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together with Christ. So walk alive in Christ. For those who are interested to join the worship team as a band member in the dance ministry, we will be holding an audition today. 
So, mamaya after our service, uh, please prepare one audition piece. So, magkakaroon tayo ng uh, audition mamaya. And for more information, you may approach me. Ako si Tisa. For other, for other worship team auditions. And Marjorie and Aileen. So, si Marjorie and Aileen, they are also here at the back. So, you may contact them for the dance ministry auditions. We also have sign-up sheets outside the worship hall. So, mamaya paglabas nyo, may mga fill-up forms doon. So, you can fill out if you want. And uh, we're encouraging you to join us as a worship team in the dance ministry. And for our next announcements. The Lord has called us to reach out to the community in Talumpok. The Lord has given us an opportunity to be there. And by the grace of God, we have reached out to young people in that area. And we would like to continue to bring the gospel to the Talumpok area. And I have shared with my call pastors and my call elders here how excited I am with this. Why? Because Talumpuk is an area that we can describe as unreached. No church presence yet in that area. And perhaps it is because of the terrains, because of the location, but I'm excited because this is very biblical. We are called to reach out especially to the unreached groups. And so in order to show the love of Christ, to bring the gospel to them, we are scheduling a medical mission on October 7. That's a Saturday. I hope that you would highly consider coming with us. We need people to help out. We need people to share the gospel. We need people just to simply share the love of Christ. So October 7, and prior to that Sunday, we will hold some briefing trainings with regard to what we will do in that area. So pray for us. Pray that indeed the Lord will go ahead of us. The Lord will just bless this effort. Looking forward to one day that in that area we're in, most people are still in bondage to the traditional religion. Will be freed, will be made alive through the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a sign up sheet uh, outside this worship hall. Kindly let us know that you are willing and available to take part on October 7 so that we can contact you with regard to the trainings and briefings. We are in need of doctors, uh, medicines, and other supports with regard to this. And also, we would like also to consider if we can bring dentists, which is the primary request of, of that area. So if you can help us with that, uh, kindly let me know, or Pastor JJ know about this. Thank you. And uh, for the next announcement, there's another one. Hello. Uh, at this point, we would like to welcome ang um, ating pong mga first-time visitors. Everyone, can you please stand po? Uh, we would like to acknowledge and welcome you. Okay. Otherwise, uh, we also would like to welcome our Balikbayan, si Michelle Long. Sabi po mga bisita, huwag po kayo mahiya. Kindly stand up so we will recognize you. Yeah, we will come back. Hello. Uh, the benediction, I believe there's one more announcement, led by Faith, our fundraising towards purchasing lead wall, LED. 
Ilalagay po natin dito. Ang size po ay mula rito hanggang sa taas po tayo, hanggang dito. Mula rito po hanggang sa kabilang side. And that will truly help us enhance our worship experience. Yung ating mga verses will be bigger, will be more readable to all of us. So kindly consider that. Pray about this. And if you receive the prompting from the Holy Spirit, kindly indicate in the offering envelope that your, what you have given is for led by faith. Lagay niyo this envelope, led by faith, and then put in your support towards this effort. Tayo po tayo lahat. Let us pray. We praise you, our great and wonderful God. To you indeed, we give honor and glory. Now may the Lord who has given you so much, giving in you Jesus Christ, God himself, so that you will find him and know him and enjoy him forever because you have been made alive. Lord, keep you. May the truth of who Jesus Christ is in your life be clear and established deep in your hearts. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Walang ibang sasambahin. Tanging ikaw, Panginoon.